Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll take a look at one of the widgets from the key add-ons for Elementor Premium plugin. The widget we'll be looking at is the interactive project carousel. With it, you can create textual carousels that respond to both hover and scroll, and in different ways too. Essentially, when you hover, an image pops up, and the different images are attached to different bits of text so you can create connections between different types of content. Moreover, you can scroll across this element and the text will shift to reveal different parts of itself. Also, the interactive project carousel widget can be used on full screen pages, meaning that this element will take up all the space on your page. You can see that in this next example. This is a preview of a home page from the key theme. There's a link below if you'd like to take a closer look at that page. You can also use the interactive project carousel as one page element among others, like the example here. But then you should keep in mind that scrolling across it will both shift the carousel and shift you down the page. So it's up to you to decide which use would work best for you and your site. In the meantime, let's see how this widget works and what you need to know to set it up. Head over to the back end. In the Elementor sidebar, search for Interactive Project Carousel. There it is. Drag it over to the right. It has... Let me just move so the image vanishes. Okay. It has one line of text with three items, or slides, all with dummy content. Now, if you want to add more rows to your carousel, you have this neat number of rows option. Simply set the number for how many rows you want to have. I'll be using two. Under this option, we have the child elements. There are three items here and they correspond to the number of slides or the number of different pieces of text. So, example title 1, 2, and 3. When we open an item, we can see what kind of settings we can make to it. For starters, we can change the content. It involves replacing the title. That's this bold text here. Then we can replace the subtitle. That's this text here. Then we can replace the image that appears on hover. So, let me add my content in place of the dummy one. I'll replace the title first. Give me a second to type it in. Okay. Then the subtitle. Just a moment. There it is. And finally, the image. Simply click on this field. Then you can upload something or pick an image from your media library. I prepared my images, so I only need to select the right one and insert media. All right, first item content done. After that, we have the link field. This is where you can set any URL you like and visitors will be able to access whatever you linked by clicking on the title text for this item. I'm going to set a hashtag here as a placeholder so the item will look linked. Then we have the image maximum width. This option allows us to set the display width of our chosen image. For this, let me clear it. I'm going to switch to percentages and set 9. Alright. After that, we have the vertical offset option. As you can see, it lets us move the image up and down. I'm happy keeping it on its default setting, so I'll clear this. And then we have the horizontal offset as well. If we want to move the image left or right, I'll switch to percentages for this and set 9 for the value. And those were all the item options we have. I'm going to skip ahead now while I customize the remaining items and add a few more besides. Okay, here we are. I have 6 items in total, and they're all customized. So that part's done. Now, if we look under the items, we have this option, Image Animation. With it, we can pick the appearance animation for the images. The default setting is fade, so if we look, the images fade into being when we hover over a bit of text. So that's one option. The other is fade from bottom, and that looks like this. Still a fade in effect, but with a twist. It's nice, but I'll stick with the simpler fade. Okay. After that, we have a different section. The developer tools. When we open it, it has one option, which, if enabled, will display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode. Okay, I'll put this back now. There. And under that, we have the help section where you can find some helpful resources, should you need them. So, those were the three sections in our first tab. The help, the developer tools, and the general. 
We looked at everything in them, which means we covered the content tab. And now we can move on to the style tab. In here, we have options that allow us to style different aspects of our carousel. To begin with, we can set the minimal height for the element. So we can change how much space on the page our carousel will take up. I'm going to set 430 pixels for it. Then we have the background color, where you can set any shade you like. It's a very straightforward color picker. And after that, we have the Enable Border Between Rows option. It's enabled by default and it gets us this line here. You can switch it off, there's an option in the drop-down. And that's what I intend to do. But before that, I'm going to take advantage of having the border enabled to show you the border style options. Here they are. With them, we can style the border. We can adjust its width, that's the horizontal width of the border, not the line thickness. Other than that, there is the option to pick a color, set the border thickness, and adjust the line's vertical offset. And that's it. Let me go back to the start and disable the border as I don't plan on using it. Alright, there we go. So that's the first section done. And the next one is for the item style. Here we can pick if the items, specifically the subtitles, will be aligned to the top, the center, the bottom, or to the baseline, where their bottom and the bottom of the title will be aligned. I'll go back to using the top setting. Then we have the option to set the image's maximum width. It lets you set the upper limit for the width of the images when they appear. I won't be changing anything here as we had an identical option within the items options earlier. And since I set the width for each image individually, I don't need this option that will let me set the width for the images as a whole. So after this we have the images vertical position option. By default, when the images appear they are in the middle of the element height. We can switch that for the top. And then the images will appear at the top edge of the element. Or we can set them to show up at the bottom, which will look like this. The bottom of the images touches the bottom of our element. For my part, I'll keep the middle setting. Ok, there it is. After that, we have the image horizontal position option. By default, it's on the right. But we can set it to be on the left, so it looks like this. Or it can be in the center, and that looks like this. I'm going to set mine to be on the right. There it is. Perfect. So we set the image position, but if there are some adjustments we want to make to that, we have the offset positions to help us. The vertical offset lets us move the image up or down. A larger value will push the image downwards, and a smaller or even negative value will push the image upwards. I'll clear this as I'm happy with the existing setting. And then we have the horizontal offset, which would allow us to shift the image left or right. I'm not making any changes here because I already set values for image horizontal offset earlier when customizing my items. That's the option you can find here. Anything you set in the item options will overrule the more general style setting. But, as you can see above, I didn't make any changes to the vertical offset and that's why it worked when I showed it to you in the style tab a moment ago. Alright, let's get back to where we left off. That was the item style, which we actually finished. So, moving on to title style. This is where we can make changes to the title text. We can change its tag. The current setting is H3 and this is what it looks like on my theme. By the way, I'm using the key theme, another one from our latest line of products. So, we have H3, but we can replace it with, say, H1. And then it would look something like this. Besides the tag, we can change the title color. I'll do that now and set the hex code for the color I want. Ok, there we go. Following that, there is the title active hover color. So, the color that would show on the active slide or when you hover over any of the slides. I'm going to set a darker shade for this, almost black. Ok, there we go. And finally, we have the title typography options. They contain several settings, including the option to pick the font family for the title. Then we can change its size by using this slider or by typing in a new value. I'll set 150 pixels for the value here. Then we have the weight option. 
I'll reduce it a bit and set 400. Okay. And then we have the transform option where we can turn the text uppercase to lowercase, capitalized or normal. And the style option, which we can use to change the text style from normal, which is our default, to italic or oblique. Following that, the decoration lets us add a line over, under, or through our text. Or we can use none of those, as is our default. Below that, we have the line height option. The value is in M's by default, and I'll put 1. There. Then we have the letter spacing and word spacing options if we want to add more space to either our letters or words. And that's it. By wrapping up the typography options, we also wrapped up the title style section. The next thing we have is the subtitle section, where we can change the look of the subtitle text. So we can change its color. You can set any shade you like. I'll add the hex code for the same color I used on the titles. Then we can change the margin around the subtitles. I increased all sides evenly, so my subtitle now has 15 pixels of space all around it. I'm not entirely happy with this, so I'll clear the value and click here to delink the fields. Now I can set different things for different sides. At the top, it's going to be 8 pixels. These can stay, and on the left, it'll be 5. Perfect. After that, we have the subtitle vertical position option. By default, it's set to the top, as we can see on the right. But we can switch it for the middle, or the bottom. Granted, you'd adjust your margins if you decided to keep your subtitles like this. However, my plan design includes me keeping it at the top. Alright. Then we can change the subtitle active hover color. So, any color you set will appear only when you hover over a slide in the carousel. I'm going to use the same color I set for the title active color. Alright, there we go. Looking good. And after that, we have the typography settings for the subtitle. All the options here are the same ones we've seen under title typography. So, there's no need to explain them again. Rather, I'll make the settings I need and we can carry on. And what I need is the size, 25 pixels, and the weight, 500. That's all. Now, over in the next section, we have the space between items option. It allows us to, as you can see, add more space between the slides in the carousel, so they have more room. I'm going to set 25 for this. And then we have the space between rows for creating more space between however many rows you have in your carousel. Again, I'll set 25 for this. There we go. And as we already covered the border style options earlier in the video, that's a wrap. I'll now hit update to save my work. This is the carousel design I was going for. It's all done and it helped us to see and get to know the widgets options. So, this was one possible use of the interactive project carousel widget. The page we started from can show you a few more, but this is truly an element that offers so much possibility for creative solutions, you'll be spoiled for choice. Hopefully, this video has given you an idea of what you can do with this widget, and has provided you with all the information you need on its various options. But, if you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about any new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching!